You know, you watch the game again and you wonder what the coaching staff was doing. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It's a Monday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast. Network your team every day on a Monday, September 18th and a Tuesday, September 19th. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for finding us wherever you get your podcasts. And please subscribe on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel where you can find us each and every day as well. Of course, we got to recap again and kind of discuss some more what took place yesterday down at Ford Field at the home opener. Seahawks win in overtime 37 to 31. We'll get into that. And at second glance, the more I watch, the more I read, the more I rewind the DVR, the more I don't like what the coaching staff was doing at the end of that football game yesterday. We will discuss coming up momentarily. We got their pro football focus PFF grades. Yes, we've got them from yesterday. Top five and bottom five. Lions on offense and defense, which we do each and every Monday. We'll do that today coming up on Lockdown Lions and some injury concerns. What's the latest on David Montgomery? Hal Vitae, James Houston, all of that today right here on Locked On Lions. Matt Derry with you. Monday, September 18th and a Tuesday, September 19th. Thanks for making this your first listen. Shout out to our everydayers who are out there as well that check us out each and every right here on Locked On Lions. Today, we are brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. Yes, LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Follow us on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, at Dairy Speaks, D E R Y Speaks, at Locked On Lions. Also, the Matt Dairy Facebook fan page. We're on threads at The Real Matt Dairy. And also, please subscribe and watch us on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Um, You know, some of those sports guys back in the day, Lions licking their wounds after a 37-31 loss. We've got highlights. Um, yeah, Lions lost yesterday. It was not a good loss. Um, I don't know if they're a good loss, bad loss. I don't know, is there such a thing? But regardless, Detroit had a chance in that game. And yes, there were injuries. Yes, there was bad officiating. A lot of things went into yesterday. Jared Goff played well. The more I watched... But, but let me let me just go back to something here. And it's something that I didn't do a good enough job yesterday on. And that is the Lions trailed 31-28, had the football with a minute and 44 seconds left. I'm, re, I'm I took my notes on the 50-yard line yesterday after the Khalif Raymond punt return. They're down 31 to 28. What is the gambling man? Crazy, wild, gambling, Dan, 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 gambling, Campbell, gambling, Dan. What's Dick gambling Dan been doing all day? No punts, no field goals. We're going for it every F and fourth down, right? Because that's what the, the, the gambler does. First and 10 at the 50 with a minute 44 to go. Down by three. What would you rather do? tie the game and hope you win the coin toss or I don't know, score a touchdown and take the lead. You know, go off to Josh Reynolds to the Seattle 39 for 12 yards. Minute five to go. Khalif Raymond on a reverse to the 27 for 11 yards. All timeouts left. First and 10 at Seattle's 27 with 32 seconds left. Goff short to J uh, Jameer Gibbs. Let the clock run some more. Incomplete. Short to Gibbs to 20 to the 20-yard line for three yards. Take your time out. Kick a field goal from Riley Patterson. Tie the game. And after the game, Dan Campbell said, well, we didn't want to give the ball back to Seattle. Seattle got the ball back in overtime, and you never did. And I didn't touch on it enough yesterday, and I should have. Dan Campbell screwed that game up yesterday. He did. 
No, I'm not saying fire Dan Campbell. I like Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell's done a really good job. But what did we say this offseason? What did we talk about were some keys for this season to be successful? Seeing the coach grow before our eyes when it comes to on-field decisions. We know how good he is in the locker room. We know how good he is with the front office, the culture, the synergy with Brad Holmes. The question was going to be, will he be able to do the job late in games, making decisions, and rewinding the tape last night? And again this morning, dude, go for the touchdown. All game, you're gambling. All game. Then at the end of the game, it's, oh, let's just pull it back here. Dink and dunk. Get it to Jameer. Let's run some clock. And let's go to overtime. Well, how'd that work out for you? Your defense sucked. Future head coach Aaron Glenn can't stop Geno Smith. We've seen that now for two years. And you never get the ball back. But if you were going for it and you had that go for it gambling Dan mentality all day and you continued it at the end of the game, even if you left Seattle 45 seconds, I'd rather be up 34-31 or excuse me, 35-31 than be at 31-31. Now I get it. You, Jared Goff could have thrown an interception in the end zone. A guy could have fumbled. There's a lot that could have happened. But Seattle's defense sucks. Couldn't stop you all day. Other than when they, when you fumbled twice and threw the pick six where there was a miscommunication between Gibbs and Goff. It's a mistake. And, you know, I just don't get it. You're at the 50 with a minute 44 to go and you play foot off the pedal football. Oh, let's just make sure they don't get the ball back. What? What if they got the ball back and they were down four? Yeah. Geno Smith could have probably taken them down the field and scored against the Lions secondary yesterday and in their defense interior defensive line, which failed to show up. It's possible. But wouldn't you have rather been up 35-31 and had a lead than go to overtime, lose a coin flip, and never see the ball? It doesn't make any sense. You've been gambling all day. You've been aggressive all day. And uh, I don't know. I didn't like it. And I hope Dan Campbell learns from it. I hope Ben Johnson and them learn from it. I know what Seattle was doing defensively. Maybe they gave you the dink and dunk underneath after the two first plays, the one to Reynolds and the reverse to Raymond. But still, no shots at the end zone, letting the clock run down. Had a timeout in your back pocket at the end. Um, Not good. Not good. Now, Seattle's got a good team, all right? Their defense, I don't think, is very good, but Geno Smith and that offense have been a thorn in the Lions' side for two-plus years. But yesterday, I think the Lions got too conservative late, played to tie, and then it burned them when they didn't win the coin toss. And yeah, you could argue about that stupid rule, sure. But I would have rather gone for it, been aggressive, and taken the lead. And the Lions did not do that yesterday. Coming up next, PFF grades. Uh, how did the Lions do in that department? Which Lions did well? Which Lions did not? We will tell you coming up next. But first, LinkedIn Jobs. Hey, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available when you're looking to hire. That's why you got to use LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. All right. Easy to create a free job post on LinkedIn. Then you add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile. Spread the word that you are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's my small business rank LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. It's simple. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash LockdownNFL. That's linkedin.com slash LockdownNFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply.
All right, folks, uh, Lions lose yesterday, 37-31 to Seattle in overtime. we got a couple of Monday night games tonight. we got the Lions and Falcons at Ford Field. The return of Michael Rothstein to Ford Field's press box this coming Sunday. Atlanta uh, off to a pretty good start here. Um, aren't they 2-0? and I mean, that's uh, impressive. Falcons coming in with uh, Bijan Robinson and company. We will see how that goes. All right, Pro Football Focus, PFF. Each and every week, they put out their grades. Let's give you the top five offensive players first. Amon Ross St. Brown, no surprise, graded out at an 84.9. Tops on the Lions. Josh Reynolds was second at 81.0. Jared Goff had a good day, 80.2. Those are excellent grades for those three. Sam Laporta, or as Greg Olson called him yesterday, Laporta. Sam Laporta, 79.3. Loved his yards after the catch. His yak, by the way, fifth highest of any tight end or receiver yesterday in the entire league. Uh, and Frank Ragnow came in fifth at 79.1. Lowest graded Lions offensive players, uh, Brock Wright at a 44.8. I was alerted on Twitter yesterday that Brock Wright is dating Carly from the Red Wings, the girl on the Jumbotron. All right. Marvin Jones, 50.8, coming in uh, second last. Graham Glasgow, I told you, when Big V went out injured yesterday, Glasgow was horrible, 53.4. Jason Cabinda, 55.4. And Jameer Gibbs, my guy, 56.0. Those are your top five bo uh, and bottom five Lions on offense. Not a real surprise with any of those grades from yesterday. On defense, only one player cracked an 80 grade, and that would be Derek Barnes. Look, I know they want to mix in Sam Laporta and they want to play Rodrigo, but Derek Barnes is one of the best linebackers on this team. 85.4. He played well. Uh, Kirby Joseph came in second at 77.7 with the grade. Third was Cam Sutton, 69.1. Tracy Walker, who uh, had to play a little bit more yesterday because of some injuries in the secondary, 67.2. And Chauncey Gardner Johnson Jr., 67.1. Those are your top five Lions defenders. Now, no surprise that the bottom five on your Lions defense are all, your bottom six, really, are all on the D-line. The Lions D-line yesterday was non-existent. Pass rush, terrible. Uh, interior D-line, Statistically horrific. James Houston, who we're going to talk about in a second, is going to be out for a while. Lowest graded line yesterday, 30.2 on defense. Benito Jones played 47 snaps. Didn't register a tackle, an assist, nothing. He didn't even have his breath on the quarterback, 35.3. Aleem McNeil, very disappointing day yesterday, 43.8. Levi Onzerike, yikes, 45.6. Second round curse continues down at 222 Rod Woodrum. Uh, Charles Harris, 48.2. Again, a ghost yesterday. And then six was John Kaminsky at 49.9. We love the commish, but the commission was nowhere to be found yesterday uh, during that game. And it cost them. Look, I get it. You're not going to maybe sack Patrick Mahomes and Geno Smith a lot the first couple of weeks because of the way those guys move around. But you got to get some pressure. I mean, my goodness, Geno Smith was sitting back there all day, just munching on a sandwich, some chips, a little drink. He was living it up back there. One sack in two weeks is not going to get it done. And I got news for you. If the interior D linemen don't start playing better, pick up the phone and call in Dominican Sue. Bring Sue back. Bring Sue back. Not ready to do that yet, but I need to see something from this interior D line because so far hasn't been great um, at all. So, you know, you, you think about where this team is. They can play a lot better. And they're one and one. They're in good shape. Um, the division's terrible. Green Bay lost you. Everybody in the NFC North lost yesterday. And all the teams yesterday gave up over 400 yards of total offense. Bears lost. Vikings lost on Thursday. How about the Bears, by the way? They, <laughs> I try to tell you guys in the offseason. Remember, it's like, oh, Justin Fields, I'm going to lather up. No. 
No. They're already talking about Caleb Williams in Chicago. Uh, Bears give up over 400 yards of offense. Same with the Vikings. Same with the Packers. All the NFC and the, and the Lions. All NFC North teams lose yesterday. Uh, so Detroit at one and one. Still in first place in the NFC North. So there you go. But those are our PFF grades um, for the, the day yesterday. Like we said, still a long way to go. Still a good football team. Still believe that things are going to be all right. All right. And when you look at the situation, they went into Kansas City. No asterisk. Stop with the asterisk talk. No asterisk. They beat the Chiefs and they were physical. They ran the football and they and they and they they rallied to the football defensively and made plays. And yesterday was just track meet time. And they just did not make enough plays, especially on defense. I mean, that last drive, how many more times are we going to see Geno Smith on third and long have all day to throw? That has to be corrected. Jerry Jacobs had a really poor game yesterday. What was Jerry J Jacobs' grade yesterday? I thought it'd be worse than it was. He was seventh lowest at 51.2. All right? But I think that's a kid that will bounce back. Um, we'll see about the injuries. We'll talk about the injuries um, coming up next. I will do that. But first, I got to tell you about our friends at FanDuel, because that is why. Oh, I got to find the... Oh, the overlay. Bop, 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 bop. All right, here we go. Uh, FanDuel, we got two, count them, two Monday night football games tonight. Saints and Panthers, Steelers and Browns, the Stillers and the Browns. Cleveland trying to get to 2-0. Uh, you want to get on the action tonight? Play with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get to $2,000 in bonus bets. Guaranteed when you place. All right, let me do that again. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets, guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose, just place a $5 bet at FanDuel. The thing about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of the NFL. And while we're talking about some money down, you want to do the more or less game and just have fun with individual players. That is why you got to check out our friends. Oh my goodness gracious. I am just messing up today. Uh, prize picks, prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. It is simple. It's the best place to go. If you want to pick, do the player projections. So you pick more or less than two to six players Start there and their projections and watch the winnings roll in. It is that simple. And you don't have to go up against other players. Just go up against the projections. Tonight, Nick Chubb, I think he's going to gain more than 100 yards. Put it in at prize picks. I think Kenny Pickett's going to throw less than two interceptions. Put it in on prize picks. They offer weekly promotions as well that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday tomorrow. It's really simple to play. You make your picks, you submit your, you submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. It's a lot of fun. All right. Go to prizepicks.com slash NFL. Use the code LockdownNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. All right. Prizepicks.com slash LockdownNFL. Prizepicks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right. Catching my breath here. Let's talk about some injuries here. Uh, yesterday, James Houston broke his ankle. He's going to be out six to eight weeks. It's a big loss because James Houston, and I know he didn't play a good game yesterday and got caught in coverage a couple of times, but Lions need pass rushing help. They need to get to the quarterback. And James Houston last year in limited snaps had eight, had eight sacks. So he broke his ankle and he's going to miss six to eight weeks. And it may include surgery. So not good. Uh, Halapulavati Vitae had his leg rolled uh, under him. Yesterday from behind on a running play late in the fourth quarter, Dan Campbell said today, quote, Big V could be out for a little bit. We'll know a lot more really in the next couple of days here. So a little bit, who knows what that is. Dan Campbell said they're not sure yet if they're going to put him on the injury reserve list. But regardless, what I saw yesterday was a step down from Big V to Graham Glasgow. Uh, Big V had played well at right guard. And the offensive line really is, <laughs> 
you know, moving Sewell over to the left side yesterday, Matt Nelson from the right side did just fine. Uh, as far as David Montgomery goes, uh, he has, hold on, David Montgomery and got injured yesterday, had a uh, thigh injury, thigh bruise, according to Dan Campbell. Today, Campbell was a little bit more optimistic about Montgomery than he was by time. Quote, he's kind of a little bit in the boat of day-to-day, Campbell said. Uh, Dave Burkett said after the game yesterday, it could be a couple of weeks, so did Adam Schefter today. But all in all, uh, as Dan Campbell said today, very reliable, everything else. We'll see how he does with a thigh bruise, but hopefully that's all it is, and Montgomery won't miss a few weeks. Now, some of you have hit me up on the Twitter machine at Dairy Speaks, said, oh, we got to pick up Kareem Hunt. No, the Nines are not picking up Kareem Hunt. All right, that's not happening. Okay? Uh, there's a reason Kareem Hunt is out of football. Um, you know, there are other backs that could be out there, um, but I'm not not so sure that the Lions are going to be going after somebody like Kareem Hunt. I just, from a culture standpoint and locker room, he's not the best. He's not the best. So we'll see on that. But I think David Montgomery is going to be okay. Uh, what I want to see more, and I'll continue to bang the drum, is I want to see more of Jameer Gibbs on the move. I want to see him going in motion and handing the ball, handing him the ball on a reverse. I want to see him going in motion behind the line of scrimmage and hitting him with a quick screen. Um, I think Jameer Gibbs can be a huge weapon and kind of the broadcast talked about it yesterday with Kevin Burkhart and Greg Olson. I'm not so sure Ben Johnson knows yet how they're going to use him. And because none of those guys and other regulars played in the preseason, they're still figuring out. I think Gibbs is going to be a heck of a weapon. Now I get it. Bijan Robinson is ahead of him right now. The first two weeks, Bijan's been great for the Falcons. But I think Jameer Gibbs is going to be really good. You know how I feel about Craig Reynolds as a, as a backup. Come on, Craig. And I think he'll get more opportunities. My guess is if Montgomery doesn't play or has been ruled out earlier in the week, the Lions could bring back a Jamar Jefferson or somebody like that. Of course, Justin Jackson retired. Uh, I'm not so sure the team is going to be going anywhere, you know, from the waiver wire or any of these free agent backs and making any kind of pickup just yet. We'll have to see. Um, but I like the fact that it's just a thigh bruise for David Montgomery because yesterday when, uh, Monty left the field and was on a cart for a little while, we were kind of all holding our breath. And what we saw yesterday with golf throwing the pick six after nearly 400 pass attempts without an interception and Montgomery fumbling, which he rarely does. Hopefully that's just a one week thing. And next week they clean it up a little bit. Lions last year in the second half of the season were one of the top turnover teams in the league for plus minus. So far this year, they're minus three. <laughs> one of the reasons why they're one and one and not two and oh, right? You don't turn the ball over, you win. It's that simple. And we kind of warned you before the week. Like I just, I knew that you know, Alex Kemp and that officiating crew that were flag happy and, and everything else. So, We'll see. Falcons coming in, playing good football. Yesterday coming back to beat the Packers. Um, you know, knocked off the Panthers last week. I think Atlanta and Baltimore. And who's the other one? Atlanta, Baltimore, and Philadelphia are the only two on teams right now. So, I mean, I'm not telling you that I think the Falcons are a great team by any stretch of the imagination. But B. John Robinson is really, really good. Drake London had a really good second half yesterday. Um, and so now, you know, you kind of, this is a home game coming up this weekend that you have to win. Because you're going on the road to play Green Bay on Thursday night uh, next week. And I just got to get this one this week. Yes, Falcons 2-0. and They've uh, scored 49 points and given up 34. They're a plus 15 so far. Tampa Bay also 2-0. That's another, that's another surprise. It's early. Still early. I'm not panicking. This team I still think is going to win the division. They can play a whole lot better than they've played. Offense on the Thursday night or against the Chiefs did not do what they could have done. Didn't finish drives. Yesterday, look, you score 31 points at home, you figure you win. 
So, all right, that'll do it for us here on Locked On Lions. Working on a guest for tomorrow. We'll see if that comes to fruition. We'll do our uh, crossover on Thursday. Locked On Lions, uh, as always, wherever you get your podcast, please subscribe on YouTube. We return tomorrow with more right here on Locked On Lions. Thanks, everybody.